Hi and good evening on this uh, Tuesday, I think, uh, April 21st. Uh, um, yeah, and welcome to our newest uh, edition of uh, Octoprint Code and Chat. And uh, yeah, this is actually a continuation of the past two episodes because uh, two episodes ago we started on a little plugin called Octoprint Terminal Stats. Uh, that we continue to work on last time and will also continue to work on this time. So um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what this uh, what this plugin does in case you didn't uh, yet watch the past two episodes. And um, yeah, that that should be that. Um, what what are we actually going to do here for those of you tuning into this format for the first time? Well, um, yeah, Octoprint and Code and Chat is a is a live stream format that I. Um, uh, that I started, uh, yeah, just to offer some kind of entertainment during uh, these times of of uh, staying at home and not being able to go anywhere and all that. And uh, what I basically do here is give you the opportunity to look over my shoulder while I work on Octoprint. And I do this, yeah, like once or twice per week, uh, depending on how I can fit it into my schedule. And... Um, yeah, I'm I'm keeping an eye on the live chat while I'm doing that. So for me, that will be up there. So if you see me looking there, that's me trying to catch up on what all of you are uh, saying at that point in time. Um, I'm also going to share my second screen with you, which is on my right, uh, where you'll uh, also be able to see what I'm typing in the IDE and all that. And occasionally you might also see me looking over there because that's my main screen in case I have to check anything there quickly. Yeah, long story short, uh, that's about that. Uh, so let's just maybe uh, switch over to the um, to the screen sharing setup. And hopefully also the live chat will populate and it just did, perfect. And hi, Anina. Um, and uh, yeah, so what are we going to work on? First of all, maybe let's take a look at what, uh, oh, I have to start the server for that, apologies. Doop, 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 that one. Um, yeah, we, we uh, built a little um, plugin called Terminal Stats, which was an idea of um, ROMs. My voice is a bit out of sync, I'm being told. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around with the audio settings now. I better not, I think. Uh, so let's hope it's not too bad and you can still follow me. Two seconds! Jesus, okay. I did not have these issues earlier when I tried that. Huh. That might actually be some issue with YouTube today then, because my own local tests were perfectly in sync that I did earlier. Let me quickly try what happens if I do a local recording, if I can reproduce the issue. And I'm just going to do some stuff that will hopefully hopefully be something that I can actually match up on video. And then I'm going to take a look at that quickly. Give me a second. Just have to up the volume here. Yeah, so that seems to be on YouTube's end, not on mine. That sucks. Um, ah, okay. So that's that's good news then, Daniel. Okay. So apparently it's only out of sync for some people. Good. So back to what I actually wanted to do. The good thing is in the meantime, the server should hopefully have started. Um, so yeah, we were working on, an pl on a plugin called uh, Octopen Terminal Stats. The idea was by Roms or Romses. Uh, he, he seems to switch his name occasionally. <laughs> and um, the goal of this plugin is to get an indicator line, uh, indicator of lines sent were, uh, per second uh, and uh, received per second from the printer in the front end in the terminal tab. So we went through the initial task of creating the plugin project, hooking into the sending and receiving of lines. Mm. Implement a small worker that uh, sends an, uh, sends the the data from the front end to the back end, uh, from the back end to the front end, so that it can actually be visualized and all that. And uh, also implemented a front end component that takes this data and displays it. 
And then we also switched this or rather extended this to also include a display of bytes per second, um, made the interval in which we collect data uh, or rather the sampling rate over which we collect data configurable. Um, made, uh, and, and last time we also made it so that the esteem stream throughput can also be measured and we added sparkline plotting. Um, of the throughput over time. And now we are going to take a quick look at how exactly this looks. And I'm simply going to connect to the virtual printer. And uh, there you have this little display. And um, no, we are going to ignore that. Um, so lines per second, bytes per second, and a little sparkline plot of the send lines per second, uh, send bytes per second, and the same on the receive side. And what you can see when some when the values actually change to something that is not zero uh, is that the display is jumping around, which is especially annoying on the right side because then the whole line starts jumps around, and um, it can also be quite annoying here on the send side though. Right now we don't get anything there because we have auto reporting of temperatures enabled. So let's just, I don't know, send this so we get some value here. And now you see that it jumps around. And this was something that we wanted to look into for today uh, to make the visual representation a bit more yeah, appealing. So better styling without jumping around the values. Mm. And um, something that was uh, added last time is also that Right now we get uh, lines per second and bytes per second, and maybe we're only interested in the one or the other. So we're going to look into how to make this a configurable setting as well. So add something to the settings, which are currently a bit meager <laughs> to say the least. Um, yeah. So this is what we're going to work on. And uh, yeah, I hope that you all will be able to uh, see what I'm typing properly. I changed the font size already back to, I think, 16 points or what it was. Um, and Clint asks if I would like to get the most up-to-date beta, which branch should I follow? Uh, currently, that would be the maintenance branch because I have not yet been able to actually get back to developing new features. So I'm currently still uh, working on some improvements and bug fixes and all that for 141 or that are going to be released as one for one and that is already on the maintenance branch. And once I find the the peace of mind and the time, which currently currently everything is just insane, uh, uh, but, but once it hopefully becomes a bit less insane again and I can actually concentrate on bigger chunks of development, I'll return to the devil branch and then that will hopefully gallop ahead and become the interesting bit. Mm. I think currently it is actually also in sync with the maintenance branch. So you should be able to just use that. Um, but yeah, maintenance is usually the best bet with regards to a stable system. Um, I cannot put my hands uh, <laughs> into fire. I'm not sure if this is even a phrase in, in English, but it's, a, it's it's one in German. I would not put my hands into fire for uh, for, for the stableness of the for the stability of the of the devil branch, but for the maintenance branch, it usually is very, very stable. Okay, so styling. Um, that's actually the wrong wrong file for, for editing the styling, I just noticed. So first of all, we will really not need that, so we are going to lead that. Um, also, in case I'm doing weird stuff with my keyboard, uh, those of you who watched the last two episodes know I am currently still adapting to the US layout on a 60% mechanical keyboard, the ultimate hacking keyboard that I got myself. It's awesome, but some special characters that I need for coding are still in places where my brain does not accept them, expect them. So yeah. And Clint, the answer to that is devil. Devil RC is when I actually put out release candidates originating on the devil branch. Devil is where the actual work is being done and maintenance is where the actual work is being done. Also, actually, I can sh just show you this because this is all documented. Um, if we go to the Octoprint repository and you take a look into contributing, then here we have this little um, section, what do the branches mean? And this explains all of that. 
So master is always the stable release, maintenance, improvements and fixes of the current release that make up the next release goal there, devil, ongoing development of new features, RC maintenance, future releases that have graduated from the maintenance branch, staging maintenance, are preparations for follow-up RCs, and so on. So just take a look there, that explains everything that you need to know with regards to which branches mean what, and also what these fix, improve, dev, or feature branches that occasionally show up um, mean. And also I need to remove that because the GH pages branch has been moved away from this repository ages ago, but yeah, uh, okay. So, um, right, we want to change the formatting and um, no, that was wrong. We need to work on that one. Yeah. So the problem that we have here is that we are injecting uh, all of our stuff via JavaScript because the terminal tab does not have any extension points that we can use, which makes all of this a bit messy. Um, to work on because we constantly have to change these jQuery statements in order to programmatically build up the HTML instead of just being able to type it out like this. And I'm currently actually wondering if we should just try to dynamically create something that we can bind to with knockout. Um, and uh, Rep CSI, I'm definitely not going to give up on learning that. I'm almost through now. I, uh, <laughs> I'm almost back at my own uh, up at my old at my at my old typing speed. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we want to try that? I mean, it would be interesting. I have never tried that to be honest, but it's starting to be something that might actually make sense here because, just. Um, yeah, setting up HTML like that is not that much fun, I have to say. So, um, let's, let's try it. Let's just try it. I'm going to learn something new here, here in, in uh, that way. And maybe you will too. Um, so we are just going to, uh, going to create a test binding. Uh, oops. And on startup instead, or additionally to doing all of this, we are going to try to create. Um, okay. How do we do that? Oh. The problem is that all of the terminal tab already has a binding. And I'm not sure if I can, or can I? Hmm. If I can uh, inject an element and bind some other few model to that, or if I need to, oh, well, we'll figure it out. Let's try it. Um, so I'm simply going to create a small diff here um, with some ID that is going to be my ID. I'm, j I'm really just trying stuff out here right now. Mm. So, right, and this is going to get a data bind of, uh, and we're going to bind this test binding to it uh, F for the inner text. And then it's, this is going to go, oops, closed again. Okay, and then we are going to, actually, this is going to be an element that we want to create via jQuery. And then we are going to insert that before our send panel as well. So that should make it go after the current uh, stuff. Uh, Jim, I'm currently just trying stuff out. So yeah, computed observable makes sense for anything that will be computed. But right now I'm just trying to figure out if I can even bind something to this. Uh... Oh, Jesus, I have no idea even. I, I, I'm so used to Octoprint binding everything to, for me that I forgot how to do it myself. So I have to quickly uh, 
gonna take a look into Octoprint's code, how that worked. App main. Um, dum 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 dum. Single button. No no no. Nope. 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 Mm. Bind view models. Okay. How how does this work again? Um, target ah ko apply bindings and then a few model to the element okay and the element here needs to be the element the, the jquery element for example okay so we are going to do ko apply bindings and we are going to imply what was the directive? View model two, right? View model. Uh, view model to the element. So view model is ourself, and we are going to imply, uh, bind that to our HTML element that we just injected. So let's see if this does anything. It might just throw arrows at us. I'm really just trying to figure out if this works because. So the answer is apparently no, because there is no, um, there is no text down there. And it, oh, there cannot be any text down there. Maybe I should actually put something in there. Oh, Gina, no, not a space before the exclamation point. No, no, no. Yeah, no, that is apparently not working. Also, please tell me if everything is still working with the f with the YouTube stuff because right now it's throwing some weird messages at me that I've never before seen uh, before seen something about keyframes. Please use a key reference of four seconds or less. Are not being sent often enough, which we call. But okay, yeah. Well, I'm going to take this into account for the next time then, I guess. Stream status pure. Great. Great. Never before I did have any errors like this as I do today. Yeah, I hope I'm still live because uh, YouTube is not really helpful today. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Ah, this is... Yeah, I think it's really it's really YouTube that's 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 having some issues today. Either that or my upstream is weird, but I'm pretty sure my upstream is good. Because otherwise, uh, my uh, my monitoring here in my in my home uh, would um, would ring uh, alarm bells all over the place. Um, I'm still quickly going to take a look. But yeah, that's that's uh, looking fine. I mean, I'm saturating the upload right now, but apart from that, it's looking fine. Huh. Okay. Well. Um. Right. So this is apparently not working, and my money is on there being some cannot rebind blah blah error being. Oh right, you cannot see that. Sorry. Um. A little dim. I need to dock that. Okay. Mm. Error calling on startup. And this is once again one of these cases where we need Chrome because the knockout errors in the Firefox uh, developer tools just are not helpful at all. F12. So what is the error? First parameter should be a few models. Second parameter should be a DOM node. Yes. First parameter should be your view model. That's us. Yes. Second parameter should be a DOM node. Oh well. Um, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at, at the YouTube panel that is telling me something about low bit rates. I mean, sorry, but I'm streaming with everything that I have here. And it's actually looking good. So whatever this is, I really think it's YouTube, not me. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that it won't die on us. Um, I'll try to keep it short today <laughs> so that we actually get through with this. Okay, so um, it's complaining that it cannot uh, bind because it does not have what it wants. Ah, I probably need to do that. There is a reason for things that I do, so let's try that. Oh, that's actually looking fairly promising. Except that it didn't... I mean, now we don't have an arrow and we don't have anything displayed. That is sad. <laughs> I would have expected at least some error or something. But for some reason we don't get that. So is it is it injected there? This is this, this is that. And we should have oh, there. Um The answer is apparently no. It did not inject it. Uh why not? <laughs> I hate JavaScript. And yes, you can quote me on that. I'm simply going to quickly remove this thing to see what... Uh, what? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I... Oh. Congratulations. I need to insert the HTML before that and not the container again. That... Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, look, that actually works. Yeah, but it breaks everything after. Ah. No, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, you cannot apply bindings multiple multiple times to the same element. That is what I feared. So, um, uh, not YouTube. <laughs> we are talking over YouTube all the time, and I'm trying to type YouTube. Uh, no, what I actually want to look is how I can um, tell knockout to. Um, bind multiple. <gasps> nope. Uh. So what I'm trying to figure out is how I do this thing where I tell knockout to please apply a different binding to whatever follows here, though I'm not sure I can even do this at runtime. The problem is that I cannot remember how it was called right now. Ooh, long time. Though it should be visible in the source, actually, come to think of it. So if I take a look into the page container and into the settings dialog and there the body and then the I'm pretty sure that, for example, the the application keys thing, ko allow bindings. That was the the value that I or the setting that I'm looking for. Hmm. Okay, thanks, Jim. 
prior to binding. Okay, yeah, then we'll just um, so we don't bind to uh, so we don't do it in on startup, but instead we are going to. I need my dogs. There are my dogs. Instead, we are going to go with. Um, nope, callbacks on before binding, right? No, wait, on before binding of the terminal thing. Uh, oh, on startup. Nah, we are in the right position. We just have it to tell have to tell it that it should not be adding stuff there. So on in 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 on startup we don't have the bindings yet. On before binding would be the wrong location because that would call us before we yeah before the bindings of the terminal stats plugin are being applied. But we actually want to inject stuff because before the term before the bindings to terminal are applied. Um, so the core component, which we cannot control from this thing here, but as we just saw here on st uh, saw here, sorry, on startup should be called when the first initialization has been done. All few models are constructed and hence their dependencies resolved, but no bindings have been done yet. So this is before um, before things are being bound by Octoprint. Um, so if we just mark this thingy that we inject into the HTML here up in a way that tells the Octoprint binding that it's being applied to the terminal tab to please leave this part out and then apply our own. It should work. I hope. And sorry if I'm if I'm uh, rambling here a bit. I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of this myself. So allow bindings true should actually be uh, for False and then true. I think that was this construct where I need to wait. Uh, no, just for fa yeah, false and then true. Yeah. Wonderful. So we need several diffs here. So we need uh, a wrapper that will just uh, sorry equals. A wrapper that will just um, set allow bindings to false, so that anything inside that wrapper will not be bound by the stock octoprint uh, stock octoprint binding 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 routine. And then we also are going to give this a more proper plugin terminal stats. Snippet. Snippet. We're going to give it this ID. We are going to tell it to allow bindings true. And I'm going to bind it to test binding. And then down here, we're going to tell it to bind to the ID that we just gave that thing. So like this. So this should inject this HTML into our page before Knockout is being, or, or rather before Octoprint starts binding everything together. It should tell Octoprint to leave out anything inside this outer diff here with its bindings. So this here should not be bound to Octoprint's stock bindings. And then we tell Octoprint to bind ourselves, our, oh wait, this has to go, to bind ourselves to this inner thing. So this should hopefully work. I have no idea if it actually does work. So this is this is uh, slightly interesting for me as well, but it seems to work. So we don't have any errors. So this is nice. We can work like that. Awesome. So we can now write the HTML in a slightly less horrible fashion. Um, I mean, it's still slightly horrible, but less so because we at least do not have to put everything together anymore with uh,
with um, individual statements. And I'm actually going to do a bit of weird indentation here just to allow me to slightly get a better idea of what I'm actually doing here. So we are going to replicate what we did up here, now down here, and are going to use send lines element and all that. We are going to turn those into um, knockout observable Fine, uh, observable um, observables. That's the word that I was looking for. Apologies. Um, and then we are going to rebuild what we currently have. First of all, with the new approach, and then we are going to modify the the um, the HTML of that because then it will be way easier than before. Um, so actually, we can maybe. Do we want to move this out of there? No. So what do we have? We have. Um, we can actually turn this, all of this, into Well then, devil is broken. Currently, I told you it is probably broken, but yeah. Um, cannot look into that right now. <laughs> and we're going to remove element from that because it's no longer an element. And this also. We don't need that anymore. And now we are going to have inside this snippet, which no longer has this text binding, we'll add. We can actually build this structure that we had here on this thing. So this is going to be a class plugin terminal stats container and row fluid as well. So we just simply reuse this. Flu oh, Jesus, fluid. Okay. Um, and inside of that, we will put this stuff and this stuff, right? Yep. So two spans with class six, one of which will have text align right, the other one will have left. So first of all, we have this, and then we have this. And inside of that, we will have send, oh wait, is this correct? Yes sent, then we will have this, no, sorry, we will have this, right. So sent, plop, followed by lines per second, then a pipe, then then the uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this up to the chat to answer the, the question by Patrick. And Jim, this is actually a really good idea. I might just do that. Come to think of it. Ah, oh, I like that. We are going to... It sounds like you've done this before in one of your plugins, because so far I never... Um, terminal stats... Snippet. I have no idea how else to call it right now. And uh, we are going to make all, put all of this HTML in there. Hmm. This is a bit annoying. Nah. This was me hitting the wrong key again. Okay. Well, this is good to know then, that I'm apparently doing something that is uh, not completely crazy. Though 
I'm not entirely sure if, if, if I should call this clean, <laughs> but uh, honestly, um, uh, right now it's it's uh, it's definitely the ni the better approach compared to what we did before. Um, shouldn't this actually be a diff? Come to think of it, instead of a spawn, right? Makes way more, ooh, may was way way more sense. Mm. And then with this one needs an ID, so we can snip it. And this is going to be ID equals plugin terminus. That's snippet wrapper. And then we can just refer to that by that identifier and move it over there. Uh, oh, that was wrong. I want to go here. Um, also, I wanted to... I already had that. No, I do not yet have that. Um, so the, the send bytes element, we also need that over here with bytes per second and then we also need the received spark element uh, the, sorry the send spark element and this one is actually something that will now need an ID so that we can um, refer to it down here right right so we still need this I was a bit too f too fast in deleting it. It starts out as undefined and we still also need this. Mm. Yeah, I'm seconding the question by Oli because then I can I don't bleh, I don't have to think about that myself now. Um, though I remember that you will probably need to remove the element from its parent and then just hook it back into the other one. But uh, I would have to look it up now. So if someone could throw me a hint in the in the in the chat, I don't have to Google. Um, so this is plug in terminal. That's um, come to think of it, we should maybe lowercase that button. terminus that's snippet spark. Uh, what is this? Send? Yes. And this here is basically the same, just with uh, different data bindings that we haven't yet entered anyhow. So we can just, uh, hello, end, end. So we can just copy this and reuse it. Okay. Oh, this will hook it. I don't have to remove it, but uh, makes sense. Okay, thank you. Um, so this here will be bound to the property. What was it called? Send lines on our uh, right. Wait, text <laughs> to to this property on our view model. This will be data data bind equals equals um, text colon send bytes. And this one we will keep as an ID. And down here we will do the same just with uh, data bind equals damn it's getting warm in here. Um, text Receipt lines 
and this then is data bind column uh, not column equals text column received bytes right so this should already be everything that we did in these many lines and container equals dollar in just our id which is what plugin how how did we call it this one with wrapper cloud uh, i think <laughs> sorry and this we just insert there and we no longer need all of that but instead we need to set our received spark element to our received spark element id mm, how did it continue just have to quickly look it up spark send and this should be spark receive uh, receive this receive 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 yeah okay and send spark element then will be a reference to this element yep so this takes care of fetching the HTML from actually we will bind the spark stuff after we move we have moved things just so we don't get confused ourselves here so, so this will take care of taking the thing with the ID plug in terminal that snippet wrapper from the source code of the page and hooking it somewhere putting putting it somewhere else basically in this case just before the terminal send panel and then we kept uh, cat, catch uh, two references two ids that we defined therein because we will do stuff with those as well um, and what we now also have to do is uh, actually set our received bytes and lines values from the message and now we don't we no longer have to uh, there we no longer have to do any weird stuff here with updating things via text or so. We just update the values of the bindings and the rest will be done for us by knockout. Or at least that's the, that's the plan. Um, and hopefully when we're done here and I also have to do something still in the server because right now the HTML is not being injected but once we are done here and um, with this and have restarted the server things should hopefully look exactly like before and work exactly like before at least this is my hope um, so we leave all of this with the sparkline stuff down there that still needs to be done this way but this here should this should here should be sufficient to update this stuff and now everything has been has become a bit yeah a bit less chaotic and more straightforward to work on and i have to quickly take a look at how i declare a jet thank you now the documentation server is down apparently which is not under my administrator oh, thank god it's back um which is not, uh, it's hosted on read the docs. So um, yeah, if push comes to shove, I would have had a local mirror, but still uh, template plugin is actually correct. Settings wizards, generic. Yep, I just say type generic, right? Yeah, I just say type generic. That's easy enough. So back to init. And now we tell it about a new template uh, here. So type is uh, oops is ah, now we have it is generic so a template that usually doesn't go anywhere 
what it's on and uh, the template is called what did we call it terminals that's snippet dot ginger to ginger to and I think that should already do it because now this should make sure that stuff gets injected into Octoprint source uh, the, the website source oh it will so just terminal stats okay cool apparently I was a bit more foreseeing there than I thought. Did I write this down somewhere? <laughs> I did, indeed. Yeah, look, I just should have, should, have, should have read so we don't even need this entry in the template configs here because it will just take care of this on its own. Thanks for the reminder, Jim. I should uh, do this plugin development stuff more often. I seem to have forgotten quite a number of nifty things that I put into the co code. Okay, so now we restart the server, which gives me time to actually mm, hydrate a bit. Also, look, I got, finally got rid of the <laughs> of the of the error messages from the last time. Also, this is currently Python three. Um, I switched uh, earlier this day because I had to reproduce an error, and mm, it's nice to see that the plugin is actually running under Python three as well. We made it, so it should, but. Yeah, we hadn't actually tested it on air yet. And I'm not sure if I had tested it somewhere else. Um, uh, okay, no, wait, let's let's close Chrome because it's confusing the heck out of me right now. Okay, so we restart and hopefully it's still there and it is not throwing arrows, that would be really nice. And it's not there. Okay, so something did not work. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot to bind things too. I should actually um, update the... No, I changed that. Plugin terminal starts snippet. It's correct, right? Plugin terminal starts snippet. Yeah, that's correct. Plugin terminal starts snippet wrapper. We are not binding to that. Instead, we are taking that and injecting it there. So that should actually, but it's not. So what is happening instead here? Is it injected into the page? Question number one. Uh, no, wait, I want to go... Oh, where do I want to go? I actually... Okay, this is... Two monitors, I tell you, it's the future. Um... It is still here. Why? Oh, down there, <laughs> great. So this is apparently our HTML and for some reason it has not been moved where it belongs. Why is this? ID plugin underscore terminal stats underscore snippet underscore wrapper. ID plugin underscore terminal stats underscore snippet underscore wrapper. Insert before terminal send panel. Why isn't it doing that? Hmm. <laughs> also, YouTube just told me that the stream is healthy. Isn't this nice? Um. No, not bookmark. That was wrong. I wanted. Ah, only yeah. Okay just uh, realized that it might make sense to call the wrapper actually wrapper not container. That's what solved the problem at hand. So it's time to engage the debugger. Uh, no, wait, web, as web assets, uh, plugins, not progress logger. Oh, it still needs to be uninstalled. Terminal starts. And we want to see what it actually does when we go in there. Append to? Uh, well, I, I, I'll try in a second. I just want to take a look at what it does. It doesn't stop in my breakpoint. Great. 
because the sources changed. Because I recalled, uh, renamed that thing to wrapper. Yeah, that was my fault. Okay, let's reload. And now it should. Yep. Come on. No. What? Can someone please tell me why my breakpoint is not hitting? Or is it. I mean. Hmm. I would expect it to to run in here and to break and not to constantly jump over it again. This is slightly weird, but it would obviously explain why things are not being run, but hmm does dum dum dum. Let's do some good old print debugging. Just to take a look that it actually is on a wait we need mm -hmm. this to print oh hi down there. And this is a bit of a very stupid German pun by the way, but Um, dum, 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 dum. Oh, error instantiating. Great. You know the drill. Debugging this just isn't fun in Firefox. So what's the problem? K -O -Op oh, ob observable is not a fun. I agree. I tend to actually agree. And none of you saw it. <laughs> Oh, great. And I'm making it worse. Observable. Wibble. Wibble. Wibble, wibble, wibble. Are we happy now? Observable. Is this, is this looking all right now? Because I'm getting slightly confused because of this thing here, which is wrong. Observable. It looks okay. Oh, look, it's working. Uh, only one sparkline kind of has gotten missing. What does happen when we do this? It's yeah, the, the, the one sparkline. Did we forget to inject that or did it by by accident give, get the same ID or something stupid like that? Because that would be just like me. Spark received, spark sent up here. Uh, okay. But hmm. Why isn't it plug in terminus that snippet spark received a plug in terminus that snippet hmm, just in case Ah I missed the spark there. <laughs> the spark is missing <coughs> sorry. And there it is. Nice. So we now have what we had before, but now it's way less of a headache to maintain. And now what we can do is shuffle things around and see if this helps, maybe. Um, okay, so what we're going to try. So, so right now we have everything in a... In, in, so the whole width of this, of this section here. Uh, well... The whole width of this section here is divided in 12 equally sized pieces. And what we currently do is, after we reload this here, so it actually shows, right, is that we give this whole thing, which is on one line and on one element, half of that and the other one, the other half. And what we are going to try now instead is, oh, also I forgot to change this to, uh, to received. We have a memory leak? I'm confused. Mm. 
So I, I want to give each of these lines per second, bytes per second, and the spark line three wide, uh, a space of, of three um, units each, and the same on this side, and have the labels uh, also have one. So all of this should fit into four uh, units, but we have to check if this actually works. I don't know. So, um, so instead of doing what we're doing here, we are going to oh, we are writing HTML on a US layout. Um, so this is going to be span one. Yeah, no, <laughs> that was the wrong key. Sorry. And this is just going to contain send. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, and then we are going to do another one. Uh, sorry. And this is going to contain our... Oh no, we can't do that. We actually need to do it this way because otherwise we cannot easily attach the unit. So we're going to do this. This is probably a uh, uh, one is probably not going to be enough for this, but we're we're going to try to fit it all into six and then have it equally spaced and all that and nothing wiggling around. Um, and then we are going to need another one of these. And in that we will put this thing, including the unit. And then the final one will be the sparkler. And the same thing we will do for the receipt line. So And what we will do here is we will also add an offset. So because I said we have 12, right? And currently we are occupying four, then we have to leave a space of four because we will occupy the last four. So we are going to do an offset of four and then a span one. And as I said, we will have to tinker around with these values because sure as hell they won't all fit in span one, but um, yeah, received. I'm also going to show you how to internationalize all this so that we can translate these strings because right now they can only be English. Uh, but uh, let me quickly yeah or rather so international internationalization slash localization, that's a common shorthand for that. So just that you know how to do that. Um, uh, yeah, where was I? This one goes there. Lines, plop, come on. Yeah. And this one goes in the next that we still have to create. And then the final one is the spark line, or rather is for, is for the spark line. So div class equals span one. And we take the spark line. And that should be it. And it probably is going to look absolutely horrible now when I reload. And yes. Aaron in Ginger template definitely makes it easier. And as I said, it, it looks absolutely horrible because it doesn't all fit into the space that we gave it, but, um, and it's word wrapping and all that, but we are going to work on this now. So, um, from the looks of it, I would say that we might actually want to give this and this to each as well as on this side and leave now nah, received is a bit, uh, we are going to shorten this to Rex. <laughs> to mirror the, the thing up there. And then this gets two, this gets two, 
this gets two, and this gets two, and this makes us have no offset anymore because we now have six, uh, a length of six on both sides, right? And yeah, this looks better, but now two is way too large, actually. Hmm. Also, we might want to have it right, uh, uh, right, right. How do you say that? Right aligned, right aligned. Mm. How big is one of these sections actually? Let's let let's check. And I think we we are still good with. Yeah. Um, I think this can actually still be one. We just have to have to limit this back here to an L per second and this also to an L per second. Uh, and then of course we once again need the offset of four, right? And we are going to what was it text right? No. Or I think it was text right to make it uh, be right aligned. We'll have to. I have to check if this was actually correct. I'm not entirely sure right now. Let's see. Ah, justified. Thank you, Aaron. That looks good, but for some reason. Uh, okay. This is a bit of a bit, a bit annoying, I have to say. So first of all, we don't need this space anymore. I'm just looking weird. Hmm. Hmm. And now it's breaking out of the spawn. Why is it? Uh. Yeah, it barely fits. Also, it's not right aligned. Why is it not right aligned? Uh, because I should have set this on the one outside and not on the one inside. But was it at least the the correct? Uh, yeah, text dot text right is the is the correct class. It's just on the wrong element right now. Because why? Mm. Because why not? So we want it there, we want it there, there and there, and we no longer want it here or here. Also what I'm clicking there is the middle mouse button and then just dragging for the multi-column select, uh, in case you were wondering. And yes, my little uh, show thingy there. No, pull right would do something else, Jim. We don't want pull right. Pull right would make it float. We don't want float here. The right aligned is looking okay, doesn't it? Still not 100% sure if this actually works visually. So let's just try to print something and see what happens. If there is actual traffic.
this is a simulated um, transmission error there uh, triggered by the virtual printer. Do not get confused by this. This is why everything is zero now. And I use this to test uh, certain recovery mechanisms. Yeah, this is already pulled right. Or not pulled right, but text right. Pulled right would make it float and then it would break out of the regular stuff and we would need to clear both again and all that and we're not going to do that. Mm. Hmm. It does seem to work though, right? Visually? Uh, though it, it jumped a bit outside of its space there mm. on the 10.5 yeah there yeah, it's still jumping the problem is two a uh, width of two units feels a bit wrong mm. And gym node, currently there isn't. Mm. At least I think so. I think they are hard coded. But mm. if you want to add an option, feel free. I'll happily accept a PR for that. Mm. So the thing is that a text as we currently have it, it is just it right justified in the spawn. The problem is if it grows larger than the space the spawn gets assigned, then it will you know, so to speak it will push from the from the left side over to the or that was my left uh, your left would be here right <laughs> um, um, uh, then it will basically push away from there mm, putting the spark line below mm -mm. Oh, wait. What if we make the spark? No, that is not going to solve the problem either. Hmm. 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 So one is too small, two is too big. I mean, we could obviously solve this problem very, very easily by just having one value there, lines per second or bytes per second, making that configurable. And just display the other one as a, as a tooltip, if we want that. And you can uh, decide which one is the primar primary. Mm. I think we are going to do that. We are simply going to quickly change the whole um, oh. yeah. So what we are going to do here? Uh, wrong there. First of all, we add some new settings. Mm. The unit, configurable, defaults to bytes per second. Are we already doing this align stuff? The problem is that the space doesn't suffice. And then if the space doesn't suffice, and so for example, if you have... This, this, yes, this works. Okay, wait. I'm going to try to... So CSS works like this. I hope this is somewhat... Wait, I'm quickly going to switch to the webcam. So if foo fits inside the element, everything is fine. Foo bar doesn't fit, so it just hangs out to the wobbler. 
to the right by default. So even if I justify this right, or, or say it's it's a uh, sorry, my I have to collect my pen. Even if it's uh, right justified, if it is larger, it will simply fill up the space to the left until it can no longer go, and then we will still run out towards the right. And this is what we're seeing there right now. Um, so we are already doing top what we can with regards to um, justify justification. Huh? Steve, maybe down the road. For now, I would really like to have it just as a quick little thingy and not not necessarily a big, hu huge thing. Yeah, overflow hidden, but then we would get cutoffs, Jim. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is simply we're going to limit it to one measurement per uh, side, primarily. And you can select which one you want and give this just a two span, put the spark line next to the... We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, So, settings default unit bytes. Mm. And we'll add um, a configuration thingy for that briefly. For now, we are going to change things here. We're still updating everything, but um, not everything will be visible. So, both of these get this, but they are not visible unless. Um, unless uh, set, we have settings here. Do we have settings here? Oh no. We first need to have the settings view model injected here. We don't have that currently. Okay. Now we have it. And on the settings view model, we want to access the settings dictionary, which is where we do the settings settings thing. In that, we want the plugins key, and in that, we want the key terminal stats, and under that, we want unit. And if this is bytes, no wait, lines, <laughs> lines, then this whole whole thing here is visible and. If it isn't, then it isn't visible. And the same thing goes here, but with bytes. And also up here, of course. So uh, lines is correct, actually. And bytes. And if we now restart the server, Oh. I need to stop this eating stuff because otherwise I will not have I will not be hungry anymore for dinner so mm. alright yeah that's really Um, so this is not what I expected. <laughs> Something yeah, wonderful. Mm. And I closed Chrome again. Did I put status? Did I really? Yes, thank you. That is the reason. So we are going to... Thanks, Steve. Also, hi, I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> Hope everything is all right. Mm, okay, now nothing is uh, visible. That was also not what I wanted, but at least now it seems to bind correctly again. I mean, that's of course also an option. <laughs> Maybe we want neither <laughs> uh, to offer neither as well. 
Okay, now, um, do we get... Oh, why didn't it lock that? Okay, nice. Oh, it did, but it's down there. Oh. Doing this with one monitor is a real, real challenge. Mm, settings up here somewhere. There it is. Settings. Plugins. Terminal steps. Unit. Unit. Unit is correct, right? Oh, I'm missing um, these things. Because it's a knockout binding that we... Or rather, knockout observable whose, whose value we are trying to get and for that we have to call it. Otherwise it doesn't work. As we just witnessed. All right. And now we have bytes. Why is it? Did I forget to? Yeah, I did. And then it's not an offset of four anymore because it's now one, two, one. No, it is still an offset of four. Never mind. Hmm. I'm still not 100% happy with this, I have to say. I mean, it works, kind of, but... The problem is this this distance here. This is... Oh. Hmm. Uh, still just quickly try let's try that we get what I said the idea initially was to have this show the other value on mouse over and we're quickly going to implement that while I'm trying to keep make up my mind whether I like this or not. So this is going to be... Um, send bytes, because this is the line that shows, or the segment that shows send lines, so we are going to put send bytes plus... Uh, actually, let's make, make sure that JavaScript actually sees this as a string and not as a as a numerical value and prefix it with an empty string and then um, we're going to do this and vice versa oh wait we can actually and there we have send lines and And there was an error, so we switch over here because, yeah, debugging this stuff in Firefox is a nightmare. Unable, why? Receive bytes is not if uh, it was received bytes, right? Of course it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah oh, well, it worked. It 
it works somehow. Yeah, we're going to leave that like this for now. And I'm going to add um, the do the changes on the settings page. So what we want here is, um, I guess, first of all, we need a control group that is going to get a title. Oh, also, we already started on stuff being uh, translatable over there or localizable over there. So I don't know yet what I will write in there. So I'm just quick. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, maybe I should explain what I'm doing here. So the thing is, everything between these underscore opening parentheses, uh, this is a function call in, uh, in, in, in Jinja, which calls the bubble translate function. And this marks this string here as being translatable. And what um, can happen is if your translation contains a double quote, and you see this is here, this is in title, uh, in the title attribute, and this has double qu quotes, um, then you would, if this was then injected, the translation was then injected into this, um, into this part here between the double quotes, then the title tag would prematurely be, uh, sorry, the title attribute would prematurely be closed by the double quote inside the translation. And this is, has happened in the past, which is why I introduced this little filter thingy here that you can use in the, in the templates. EDQ stands for escape double quote. And there's also an ESQ for escape single quote. And if you pipe this, or rather if you pipe the result of your translation through this, then it's uh, going to take care of um, escaping any uh, single or double quotes inside there so that you cannot accidentally break stuff here. Um, so this is part of of, uh, of of the bubble bindings for Jinja or for Flask, which yeah, Flask uses Jinja. So this is where these things come together. And this is something that I built myself and registered as its own filter inside the, the template um, the template, the Jinja template context that Octoprint uses to render this stuff. So this is usable inside Octoprint plugins, but it's not usable inside Jinja in, in general. So this is not a Jinja generic Jinja function, but something that is added here uh, for Octoprint specifically and makes stuff so much easier. Okay, uh, what we want here is um, a radio button where you have uh, bytes per second, lines per second, and neither, so you only get the spark line. Um, and are these things, I think they don't have documentation right now. This is one of these things where I really should try to find the time to invest to, to add some documentation, but so far I haven't. And yeah, you know the drill. Um, dialogue settings. I know that there are some radio buttons in the serial connection settings, which is why I'm going there and I'm going to take a look how this stuff is structured. Actually, we are simply going to copy this and are going to reuse it because, yeah, well, I mean, I know copy paste and all that, but sometimes it's just making things so much easier than trying to remember how stuff is done and then re-implementing it, especially if it's this amount of HTML code that you need to type. So, um, that's correct. Of course, the text is wrong. Mm, measurement unit and we have um, so for radio radio buttons when you give them the same name um, they will, um, this will make sure that if you click that, anything that also has the same name gets unselected. So this is how this stuff works. And here we have bytes 
we have lines and we have neither. And this will be checked if settings, plugins, terminal stats, unit is bytes. And the binding takes care of mapping this for us. We're going to remove the idea from ID for now. Not the idea, Jesus. Uh, display unit, right. Oh wait, I mean neither is also an option, so. Mm, yeah, we might have to think a bit about how to. Um, no, we don't need that. No, we don't need that. This is correct. Um, bytes. Bytes. Mm, do I write bytes per second or do I write bytes per second like bytes per second? Ah, we are going to say bytes per second and then lines per second and we are going to have um, no display here or something like that. No display of raw values. Right. And this is uh, a unit to use for display of the raw measure. Then That should already be it, I think. Let's see what happens. If we open that, first we have to reload, of course, because we changed something and the caching should hopefully be taken, get taken care of us. If we now, oops, if we now go there and close this because it's cramped enough as it is. Right, and now we can switch to lines and save and hopefully it will switch to lines and we can also Go here and switch to no display of raw measurements, save, and it gets removed. But now we have the problem that this, so these two spawn, uh, this one spawn two, spawn two that we had, it no longer gets in, it gets displayed that low, and it not only gets not displayed, but it actually gets like, it's still in the DOM, but it does not have a width anymore because it's now set to display equals none. So we now have to, um, change the offset if we have neither units nor lines. So what we're going to do here is um, we are going to try to find our ginger template again. All right, there it is. Mm, we are going to have to define, uh, de define this class here dynamically. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another data binding here. And uh, that was was that CSS? I think it was CSS. And we're going to tell it that it will have the class, oops, offset four, if, and we're going to add this in a second, and offset six, right? Yeah, because then we only have the, the yeah, six, no, she, seven, no, wait, six, six, ten, five, ha, ten, five, oh. and offset five if everything is disabled. Um. So offset four, we will have if the unit is not neither. Oops, I can't type today. And offset five, we will have if it is neither. And that will add this class on this element, depending on which is true. At least that's the hope. <sighs> dum, 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 dum. Nope. No, 
I'm leaving it open. <laughs> so now it's uh, back to how it's supposed to look. Is it though? No, it should be way more over to the oh, wait. Uh, one, two, and then three, four, and the rest is eight. I cannot, I cannot count. This is my problem. I cannot count. You heard it from me first. No, ninety-eight would be a bit over the the top. Nope. Yes. Try that again. Yeah. So now we have send and receive like this, but. If we go here and go there and we re-enable bytes per second, then it adjusts. Isn't this nice? Magic! Yeah. And we also still can take a look at that. And I'm actually thinking if we maybe want to... Um, hmm. Uh, at a proper popover here that not only contains the current values and hopefully also in a way that they will adjust, though I'm not entirely sure if this would work. Um, and now I lost my train of thought. Mm. Uh, 3D Gassner asks, um, I have an idea for one or two plugins, but never tried to make one. Is there any place where I can post the idea and get in contact with someone who has experience with plugins? Yep, uh, there is a sub forum on the community forum. So there's a category where you can um, post about this stuff. So go there, please. Um, add options for alignment. Hmm. I don't know. It feels like, like not 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 something that you would actually use, you know. <laughs> mm. I'm wondering if we can add a pop over here, like when you hover over this, that you do not get this thing here, which does not update whenever the value updates, but actually get uh, something like uh, this, though differently. Hmm, that was not helpful, right? It's exactly like this, but different. Um, but it might be interesting. Can we get this updated dynamically? That's the question here. Because I fear it would also not be possible in a popover. Because it wouldn't be bound to the knockout binding. So we cannot use the bindings in there. Hmm. Ah well. First of all, we are going to commit what we have right now. So, Control K. Uh, um, what? Why is it trying to commit that? Okay. No, we don't want to commit that. Uh, so let's see. We changed everything. <laughs> And then some, and we removed that, we added that, we updated that with a new section, new section, not a new section, but a new section. Um, we have default unit bytes. Brian, that's a good idea, we're going to do that. Um, why is there such a huge amount of white space here? That's so un utterly unnecessary. That is not going to... No, 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 no. What is happening there? Ah, that apparently was a display error. Um, oh, I was scrolled too far to the right. Um, can someone explain this to me, please? Because I don't get it. This is really weird. I mean, here we have... Oh, never mind. I wasn't scrolled far enough to the right. Ha, ah, okay. All makes sense now. Perfect. So, what did we do? Uh, we added, uh, no, we made 
unit configurable and 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 fixed styling. Yeah, I did Ollie, thank you. <laughs> I feel a bit uh, stupid right now. Okay, and we can push this. Push it. Bum, 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 bum. Right. And it got pushed. Did it get pushed? It did get pushed, nice. Okay, and now we're going to 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 that. Are going to change this title attribute thingy to a full report on the send and on the received um, stats. However, we are going to do this in a bit more sensible approach than editing this here with all these pluses and such in HTML. So, and also we don't want to duplicate it all over the place. So what we are going to do here is we're going to, yes, I am in the right uh, file. Sorry, I was a bit confused just now. We're going to help ourselves here with a little helper function. Mm, we actually can use a pull computer for that, yep. So received stats are going to be a older pure computed function plop No, I want a space there. Don't get so. And this is going to be um, self received lines. This, these are lines per second. Lines per, per second. There we have it. Then um, we're going to add the received bytes, and those are the bytes per second. And then we are also going to add a value which so far we have no binding for, which we need to change, which is the received peak, so the max that we received over line, which the server is plotting for us. Uh, logging for us and sending us on each update. This is also in bytes per second. And we are quickly going to add this as a as an observable. So received peak is going to be an observable. And uh, send peak is also going to be an observable. And now we are going to do the same thing, but for the send stats. Uh, also we want an, yeah. So send lines, receive bytes, uh, send bytes, sorry, and re send peak. And then we need to update self received peak is message dot receive rate max and self send peak is the same thing for send so send rate max nope yes nope yes okay we don't even have to restart for this because uh, all of this was able we were able to do in the front end. Um, so this here, this computed, we are now going to bind to the title attribute. So for uh, for this thing here, received stats, and for this thing here, send stats, stats. And oh, 
Yeah. Now we have our peak value here whenever we hover over that. Actually, maybe we want it... Wait. I think we want these stats on the whole... Um, yeah, on this thing here as well, right? So if you go over send, just over the key word there or the, 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 the name there, you will also want it there. And since we have this in a, in a reusable function, uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, we could also do it for the sparkline um, cell, but I think that would interfere with the, with the mouse over effect of the sparkline. So I'm not going to do that. Mm. Uh, we also want this. All right, we also have another. Huh? We're going to take this over here. Yeah, I usually try to sort the stuff so that the, the things that I might have to need need to access more often are towards the front. But yeah, I'm not sure if this is really the case here. Just yeah, it has to be ordered in some way. Which one comes first and. This is just what I figured right now would make the most sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So on this whole area here, you now get these values. And if we, oh, that was wrong. If we now upload something to SD, eh, maybe not that one. How about this one again? These values should be quite high. Yeah. Uh, wait. No, okay, yeah. 4,000 something, and here it is. Uh, two, no, 20,000 something. Um, I'm wondering if it makes sense to adjust the bytes per second to kilobytes, megabytes, and so on. But maybe that would be overkill because usually it will stay quiet low because the printer actually has to execute the moves because it, before it can tell you to continue sending. So as I explained, I think last time when we added the SD streaming support, uh, usually you will not get, um, you will not see the full throughput that is possible through the serial because the protocol makes it so makes it so that it is artificially limited by the by the way or by the speed that the printer can move at. Obviously, because it doesn't make sense to push a whole ton of stuff into the limited buffer space that is available on the printer that yeah that cannot yet be processed because the printer is still I don't know three layers before or something. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That actually looks okay, doesn't it? So, I have no idea why it thinks it needs to... This is so weird. Um, uh, what did we do? We um, added more data or rather, rather add more data because the commit adds more data to the tooltip. And we can push that. And that's that. So this works, is more or less okay to look at <laughs> and can actually be used to benchmark some stuff. Um, yeah, one thing that we have not yet gotten around to is um, this decoupling of things. Oh wait, I wanted to do this. Let us let us do this and then we'll, we'll then I'll, I'll do my wrap up that I was just going to prepare. So internationalization, localization. Um, so, um, 
you already saw it in the settings, we want to wrap these things into something like this, and then we can just put the text there. And Octoprint will make sure that it gets displayed where it belongs. Receive. Uh, and we don't need that there anymore. We do not need to localize the units, I think. And we also don't need to localize the stuff down here. Okay, so now that this has happened, we are going to take a look here. Um, and this tells us what we need to do. Um, so there are a bunch of commands that have been added to the setup pie that we can execute in order to translate our plugin. There's bubble extract, which tra extracts the translatable messages, um, which have to be marked like this, uh, into um, a file. With refresh, we can update this file. And then uh, we can also set, tell it to create a new translation for something and can compile these translations and pack them for distribution as, an, as a language pack, or alternatively, in our own plugin, we can also bundle the translations like this, um, so that they will be part of the of the installable uh, plugin and will be uh, picked up by Octoprint and your plugin then will be displayed in the correct language if the language is available. Um, so uh, we need a terminal in order to do that. And that means I have to try to convince this thing to give me the terminal we used last time because my usual one I cannot use right now. So, okay. So we're going to go there. And we actually need to activate, I think we are currently in Python 3, right? Yeah. Oh wait, why did it even pick up the plugin? Fascinating. And we're going to do this with the Python 2 environment because I think it talked it, it it I think it picked the plugin up because it's running inside the IDE and the IDE added the plugin to the Python package path. And this is the reason why, because we only installed it under Python 2. So the only explanation that I have that it is active right now is because of that. So for now we are going to work with the Python 2 environment here in the shell shouldn't make a difference at all with regards to our translation. So we're going to run Python setup by mm, uh, bubble underscore extract. And I hope this works. That looks like it worked. Uh, and now it should have, yes, it added a new file here, messages pot. And uh, we now see these, these things that we had in here and in here. All these strings, they are now extracted into this file and can be translated. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do what it says here in order to create a new locale. And we're going to create a German one because this is a language that I also happen to speak. Surprise, surprise. Um, Python setup by bubble um, new dash dash uh, dash dash locale equals and this is uh, DE. And now it should have created a new folder here with a, a messages PO file. And now we can translate stuff in here. So send. Huh. I don't want to translate that if I'm honest, because that is too technical here and we will have problems to fit this, fit it inside there. And no, I did not change my mind. I will not be adding support for SLA printers. First, most of, most importantly, actually, because they don't have an inter. Uh, the situation with FDM printers is an absolute nightmare, and they all at least usually have a serial interface over which they speak a protocol that looks more or less the same, with slight variations, which are already the reason for most of this gray hair up there. 
SLA printers, as you can buy them, they don't even have a serial interface. Some of them have a hidden network interface, which is completely undocumented and for which you have to open the machine up and plug in a cable or something like this in a port that is not exposed on the front end. So there is no way I could even add support for this unless you modify a machine. And yeah, as I said, the interface is not really documented, so I don't really see how I could do that. And I don't want to do that because, as I said, the FDM printing situation is bad enough as is and causing me causing me stomach aches and all that and headaches back enough as it is. And yeah, we are not going to go down the rabbit hole that is SLA desktop 3D, low cost SLA desktop 3D printing. But of course, as Aaron points out, when I change the com layer, um, if anyone wants to try that in some way, be my guest. I'll keep it as modular as I can in order to allow for something like that, but I will not do it. No, 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 no. Um, das Intervall. Oops, zwischen den Durchsatzmessungen. Um, how do I translate sampling interval? <laughs> Die Einheit, die für die Anzeige der, I don't know what I hit just now, der Rohdaten verwendet werden soll. Um, yeah. Abtastrate. Thank you, Olli. Abtast. This is my biggest problem when I try to do translations uh, from English to German. I usually just sit there and have no idea how to translate it. Display unit. Anzeige. Anzeige. Einheit. Is this a word? Do we have this word? <laughs> Zeilen pro Sekunde. Why is this even translatable? Bytes per second. Keine Anzeige von Rohdaten. Why is this translatable? Oh, we had it on the settings page, right? There it is. Uh, there it is translate. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Einheit. Einheit. Wait, where was I? There. Uh, no, there. Okay. Oh, wait. Hmm. Gesendet will not fit. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> now, in the terminal tab, it will say send and received. So we are going to keep it that way here as well. It's just too confusing otherwise. All right. So this is a very rough translation to German. And now we are going to compile that. Oops. And then we are going to bundle it. Uh, and what the Local DE. So for earlier I wrote dash dash local equals DE and this is a shorthand for that. So dash L and then the locale. And now it created a bunch, a new translation folder inside the, um, this folder here. And this is actually what's going to be packaged into the, into the installable plugin. So if we now restart this, we should hopefully be able to tell Octoprint to switch to German locale and then this plugin should also be displayed in German. Hopefully. 
No promises here. What was that? No, that was this wrapper has not been initialized ever again. Which I, I still haven't figured out why this happens and why doesn't it, why it doesn't happen all the time. And it's really weird. Okay, uh, we hopefully don't need that one anymore. And we are going to tell Octoprint to please give us this page in German. Oh look, I need to translate that part. Okay, um, terminal. We said we would we would keep all this, so nothing here changed, but the settings should have changed. Uh, so we need to go to the terminal that's plugged in, and now all of that is in German. No, that is not in German because we forgot that. Uh, but Abtastrate, Einheit, Bytes pro Sekunde, Zeilen pro Sekunde, keine Anzeige von Rohdaten, and all that stuff. And also these tooltips, they are now all in German. Mm. And now I spotted this part up here which was not translated correctly because it is not marked as being translatable, so we need to change that. Like this. Yeah, we're simply going to copy paste this stuff over there. Uh, there, no. I don't know what I just hit, but it was wrong. There, no. Uh. 60% keyboards, week two. And now we can update our translation file again. So we are going to do Python uh, setup by Babel refresh because that tells it to rescan all the source files for new strings. And now our um, messages PO file should contain a new uh, sorry, a new string here to translate, and also the messages PO file, of course. But yeah, um, terminal stats uh, stats configuration, and then the same procedure as last year, Miss Sophie. Compile, bundle, server restart. The same procedure as every year, James. Oli asks, how's the update workflow for changing DE typos? I have to admit, I don't, I don't understand the question right now. Like, yeah, basically like, I, I mean, if there's anything wrong in the translations, what you do is what I just did. You refresh if needed, and then you change the file and then you compile and bundle. I forgot to bundle, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay. And then you bundle <laughs> and then it should be updated. So I do this as part of every relief preparation. Actually, I run a free refresh, update everything to about what needs updating in German. And that is updated now as well. And bundle and stuff. So we added a translation. I have no idea what it has with these two files there. Add German translation actually commit and push. Ah, okay, perfect. I already answered it. Great. It, purely, purely by accident, actually, that I forgot to adjust this configuration thing in the top. Um, yeah. So this is updated now. This stuff lives here. So we have the translations here, messages, German translation, and the bundled version here, which contains this compiled thing here, the MO. Settings is still English. Where? Up there. Oh yeah. Look at that. Um, did I forget to? Could very well be. Mm. Mm -mm. It's translatable though. Why didn't I translate that? Okay. Oh, that's the bundled version. 
No, it's not a bundled version. Um, why doesn't it find that string, though? Okay. Let me quickly check that. It's the same mechanism in the Octoprint sources, by the whale. Oh, by the whale. Ooh, refresh. Uh, not bundle refresh, bubble refresh. Obviously, this will take a bit longer. <laughs> okay. For some reason, it doesn't find that in there. Why? Templates. It even goes into this file, so it should it should definitely extract that. Why isn't it extracting that? That's not good, because that means that something in this extraction process is not working like it should, and I do not like this very much. No, it's one string. It's everything in here, so between the two. That should be something that I can discover in this file. And for some reason I can't. And I am in templates, dialogues, settings ginger. So that's correct. But for some reason, so it's it's finding it's not finding that. Is it finding that? Nope. There. Huh. The plot thickens. Hmm. Apparently nothing in this file directly in this file found its way into the Okay, reload. All. Oh, yeah. No nothing that is inside here was found. But why? I mean, it does find stuff in here, or, or wait, maybe I'm, yeah, create folder. This gets found, but this, this stuff, it doesn't get found. <sighs> okay, why not? This is correct. And, I mean, we see that it processes stuff. It just doesn't uh, extract things. And the weird thing is that this is exact defined in the exact same way than this is. Like to uh, how do you say how do you call these brackets? These uh, brackets is this just brackets? And the other one are the square brackets. So. Two opening brackets, underscore, parenthesis, single single quote, then the string to translate, single quote, parenthesis, closing brackets, two of them. So, yeah, it should find that stuff, but it isn't. But I fear this is not something that I'm going to solve today. And also we already have uh, uh, 7 p.m. four minutes. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this up now because as i said i will not be solving this today but i'm going to quickly throw it up on my whiteboard so i don't is this a whiteboard marker yeah <laughs> so i don't forget that so and then I'm going to take another look at that tomorrow or something. Um, let's quickly recap. So we did all of this. And the only thing still missing is this dreaded multi-processing EPC situation down here. And um, so the current idea is the following. 
Squiggly brackets. Thank you. Oh, curly braces. Curly braces from from Cave Story. I should have known. Yeah, of course. Right, right. Uh, anyhow. Um, so the current idea is we're going to have the next installment of this on, on Friday. And uh, as a word of warning right now, uh, next week, um, I will probably only be able to squeeze in one. But uh, yeah, this is just as a heads up. So, But on Friday, we are going to have the next installment and I think the final installment that will be about this. Wait, let me uh, maybe. Yeah, uh, that will be about this plugin. And I promise to do my homework and try to figure out how we can actually achieve this separate process um, to to track the data. Um, if I might not be able to do that after all because of stuff getting in my way, like it usually does these days, um, then we'll do a regular bug fixing, minor feature implementation, whatnot thing, like we did the past couple of times before we started on this plugin series. Um, but if I find the time, then we'll try to tackle things there. And I'll hopefully try uh, learn something new in the process as well. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I hope it was entertaining. Uh, even though YouTube gave us a bit of trouble today, um, I hope I wasn't completely out of sync all the time <laughs> and things uh, uh, ironed themselves out over the course of the, of the stream. Um, and uh, yeah, I have to say I learned a lot today because I did not know that it was possible what I did there with the knockout binding. So uh, huge thanks to Jim as well for uh, 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 for the for the hints in the live chat while I worked through that. And uh, yeah, until Friday, then I guess all that's left to say is uh, stay stay safe, stay healthy, um, wash your hands, wear a mask, and uh, happy printing. And I hope I'll see you next time on Friday then. Bye.